Hi, I'm Ashley. Welcome to my bench. I've pulled out some special collection items from the Winkler Center and the Preservation Lab staff help assist the, the Winkler Center in our overall preservation plan for in a range of services. Everything from exhibition and loan to environmental temperature and humidity monitoring um, as well as uh, disaster preparedness. But we definitely do single item conservation treatment and the Winkler Center has some amazing special collection items. I've seen everything from objects such as leg braces that we had to brainstorm how to provide an enclosure for it to be shipped across the country for a loan to adrenal glands and vials as well as what you see here, a range of bindings. There are so many different types of bindings in their collection, including scrapbooks. Here's an example of a scrapbook that's in the lab for examination and some brainstorming on treatment. It contains cross sections of human lungs. This is a study of black lung or silicosis um, of coal miners from the 1950s. Here you can see an actual example of a cross section that's embedded into a piece of paper. It also contains radiography images that are on cellulose acetate, and these require some rehousing and research on some potential reformatting to make this safe for researchers. This is a beautiful example of a historic binding by the Winkler Center that has a wooden board cover. It's covered in alum tod leather that's been hand tooled and decorated. And the text inside has some phenomenal engravings as well as some pull-out engravings. And it's just a wonderful, beautiful binding overall. The text is in good shape, but it's the cover. It's got some losses along the spine as well as the clasps that are deteriorated and need some repair and replacement. Many, many items from the Winkler Center are covered in vellum. Vellum is a different material than leather. It hasn't been tanned. Instead, it's been stretch dried. And because of that, it has characteristic condition issues that cause the boards to warp and distort. In this case, the vellum has shrank and it's caused the boards to cup. And so in doing so, the vellum is actually tight like a drum. You can see there's some give where there's air inside where the board is actually cupping. When this happens, it causes stress to the joints of the book and the joints are in danger of cracking and breaking. It makes it difficult to open. On the inside of the cover, the paste down has the vellum lifting and it's in danger of coming off the board altogether. You can see it's got some original handwritten inscriptions from 1890. This book will require a little bit of treatment to humidify and relax the, the vellum. And once vellum bindings are treated, they require specialized housing to prevent the vellum from going back to the, this distorted shape. And so we provide compression enclosures that are specific to this. So on the adopter book site, you might see some bindings in need of these sort of specialized enclosure, enclosures for that reason. I pulled out a few items here from the adopted book from last year that are still in need of treatment. One of them is a portfolio of diagrams. This is a cloth cover portfolio that's original. You can see that it's in really dire shape. The, bind, the cloth cover is torn along the joint. The um, cloth ties are missing. They've actually broken over time and this would have had three flaps that would have protected all sides of these diagrams, but two of the flaps are missing and there's just this one fragment that remains. You can see it's well used and loved. It's got a lot of dirt accumulation over time. There's some issues where it looks like it might've been previously repaired with some adhesive staining. So the portfolio is the main condition issue, but these diagrams themselves are very brittle and are also covered in dirt and grime. 
left unprotected, these brittle boards are in danger of breaking and cracking. So these will require some mat board supports and potentially some encapsulations. And then these diagrams will be rehoused in a new surrogate portfolio made to look like the original. But we won't discard the original. What we'll do is we'll house the original and the surrogate and all the diagrams together in a single box to keep all the parts together. The other two items I have out are leather bindings. These leather bindings have really similar condition issues. They're suffering from detached boards, whereas one has been previously treated by a prior steward. There's some brown electrical tape where the detached boards have been reattached by that tape. But unfortunately, this tape is damaging over time. And this sweet little text on general dispensatories. Um, this is information on how to create different medicines of the time. Um, is going to be potentially harmed in the future if we don't remove this tape. Um, this will cause staining and issues with the leather in the future. Um, and this page in the front needs some repair that cannot be repaired until the tape is removed. This leather binding is really difficult to handle without the board attached, but it's a, a book on um, tar water. This was an elixir made out of pine tar. Um, at the time, it thought it cured a whole range of ailments. And so it's a very interesting text, but the leather is suffering from red rot, which is one of the reasons that the boards have probably detached. And so the leather requires consolidation and then the board will have to be reattached. And then the backboard is in danger of detaching as well. So it will need some strengthening. And then all of these books, once they're treated and repaired, will all receive housings and enclosures uh, for long-term storage. Well, that's a little bit about some of the items that we have in the lab currently. Next, I'm going to jump to showing you some before and after treatment images of items that have already come through and have been repaired. Now that you've seen some of the objects that we currently have in the lab, I am looking forward to showing you some completed treatments. Treatments at the lab are almost always team oriented, and this is because we all have specialized areas of expertise, interests, and skills. So for example, the photography throughout the talk you'll see was captured by Jessica Ebert and many enclosures were created by Chris Voinovich. All right, let's dive in. UC Libraries owns a few copies of the Natural and Statistical View by Daniel Drake. However, this binding is unique from the others in a few different ways and because it was owned by Daniel Drake's family. So knowing the provenance of this binding, the Evidence of heavy use with the leather repair along the spine was an important part of the object's history that needed to be retained during treatment. Here's a view of the spine and top edge of the binding before and after treatment. The text was rebound and lined and recased into the historic covers where the leather repair was preserved. Tears in the fold out map were repaired. And then the map was reattached where there was evidence of it being placed in the front of the binding by the owner. All treatments come with unique challenges. So during this treatment to reattach the boards on the leather binding, a few pressed botanical specimens were discovered within the pages. So to reduce the staining over time caused by acid migration from the leaves, they were encapsulated by Katerina to provide some interleaving and these were hinged into place where they were originally discovered. This is an early edition of groundbreaking work about the human circulatory system that was influenced by Vesalius. And it was donated to the Winkler Center in 1959, and at some point in its history, a prior steward had squeezed glue along the joint in hopes of reattaching the front cover, but it failed since the cover needed, needs to flex when it's opened. So before reattaching the boards on the small binding, the clear adhesive was softened with a poultice and removed from the joints. After the clear adhesive was removed, 
The cover boards were then reattached with custom toned Kozo fiber tissue paper. To give you a sense of the poultice that was used to soften the adhesive, this is a silicate clay that's called lapnite. And lapinite is an ingredient used in diapers that's used to absorb moisture. Whereas in conservation, we use it to add controlled moisture into a targeted area, which helps protect parts of the object that we don't want to get wet. So in the end, this small binding received a cloth covered clamshell that was constructed a bit larger so it would not get lost on a shelf. And to protect the fragile leather on the spine, an integrated cradle was added inside to help facilitate easy use during tours without having to take the book out of the enclosure. This is a 2019 Adopt-A-Book treatment performed by Casey Jansen. In this treatment, it was not important to retain the prior black tape repair along the spine, so Casey reattached the loose covers after removing that prior repair, and she used a custom toned paper made out of a handmade Kozo fibered paper that she used to reback the spine of the book. And this rebacking also helps protect the sewing along the spine. All right, so this slide and the next slide are a few examples of some full length treatments. This book was donated to the Winkler Center by the Jewish Hospital. It's an oversized book that was originally composed of two volumes that were bound together. However, by the time we received it, the binding was lost. You can read more about this treatment on the Digital Resource Commons for the full treatment report, and Katerina actually mentions this as her favorite preservation lab treatment in the blog post on April 28th that was posted for Preservation Week. But Suffice to say, this was a very lengthy treatment to provide a cover around a text block that was completely unsupported. And the cover was constructed to be strong and durable while taking into consideration how the original may have looked. This is a mid 19th century medical text that contains 80 illustrated plates. With the cover and spine mostly lost, there were fragments of false raised bands which prompted us to construct an archival case similar in style to the original. Here you can see some of the process involved with replicating the false raised bands. And to see more, you should definitely check out Casey's blog posted Monster of a Treatment that's located on the Preservation Lab blog. This is an excellent copy of a text on the formation of embryos from the 17th century, written by the father of embryology as he's known. This is a stiff board parchment binding with laced and vellum supports and treatment was performed to repair cracks along the joint of the cover. The inside of the text was in fairly good condition but did need some surface cleaning and the cracks along the inner hinges were repaired with Kozo tissue and wheat starch paste. Here's an example of the specialized enclosure we use to compress the covers of a parchment cover binding that prevents it from warping while in storage. Well, that's all the time we have today, but if you're interested in learning more, you may check out some of the websites listed, and I'm also happy to answer any questions that you might have.